everyone, and welcome to episode 225 of the Generation Xbox podcast. I'm Steven. And I'm Tyler, and we're your home for all things Xbox. Head on over to GenerationXbox.com today. Check out all the latest in Xbox reviews, news, opinions, and more. Uh, we just have a brand new forums uh, that we set up there. We'd love to have you join. Head on over there. Uh, again, GenerationXbox.com. Uh, there's a forums tab right there, or a link right on the main page. Just hit that, sign up today, and then check out some of the cool stories. We've got a great team of writers that are working really hard to cover Xbox really well. So, Stephen, how are you? Yeah, I'm not bad, not bad. Uh, this week, uh, first first week in in my in my new program to start teaching so it's been a little busy of a week um a little stressful too but you know we're getting settled in we're getting settled in and uh it's you know it's about that time where where games start coming out pretty regularly so you know that's nice because it's been been a little dry of course you know the couple months where i had a bunch of free time there was not much to play but now that i don't have free time there's a ton to play but what are you gonna do uh how you been oh good so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to Avengers next week. Um, I, I think it might be, you know, might be one of the fool me once, you know, shame on you and fool me twice. But, man, I still think that game might be good. Like, f- really fun. Yeah, I, I think it's more likely to be fun than good. Mm-hmm. Um, there are issues that I, I worry about, and we'll, we'll get into some of that in a little bit here. But, yep. I mean... Yeah, if you buy the twenty or the eighty dollar version, you get the game mm-hmm. on Monday, um, and if you just buy the standard, you have to wait till Friday. But we'll, we'll see. I think it, I think it'll mm-hmm. be fun. Yeah, fun to play I with mean, your friends and fun to like mess around in and play as like Thor and and everything. Mm-hmm. But yeah, then we got a Call of Duty. We got a trailer, um, all that stuff this week too. And I know we're going to talk about that later in a little bit different way, but just. I love the Black Ops series, Stephen, and I think you're with me on that. I think you liked, um, like, Modern Warfare 2, 3, maybe a little more. But uh, I-, I love the Black Ops series, and I can't wait to get my hands on this. Yeah, I definitely did prefer the, the Modern Warfare series rather than Black Ops, but I did mm-hmm. like Black Ops 1 and 2. Um, mm-hmm. 3 and 4 were okay. I mean, like, multiplayer-wise, they were fine, but, yeah, I don't know. There's something about them. They, they play a little different, but, you know. Um, yeah, to be honest, like Call of Duty, their Black Ops Three, I didn't finish campaign for that. I didn't either. That's one of the very few Call of Duty games I didn't finish campaign. I even finished the campaign in the Kevin Spacey one. You know, the press X to pay respects. Yeah, uh, you mean F, I, but well, yes, I know we're an Xbox show. But. Yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I even finished it there, and I finished. Or no, I didn't finish the Call of Duty in Space one either. Yeah. That's the only other one since World at War. I think it was the last one before that that I didn't actually complete. So, yeah, after, like, Modern Warfare 3 or Black Ops 2, whichever one came second, I didn't finish a Call of Duty campaign until the last Modern Warfare, so last year's game. So, you know, what are you going to... So, yeah, hopefully, I, thought, I mean, we'll see yeah, what I thought this... World War 2 was really good. That campaign was fun. Was that the one that had like different? Was it a full campaign or was it like yeah. story blocks? No, that was the that was the campaign. Mm. I didn't, I don't even think I started that one. It was good. Battlefield did the thing where they did the like different mm. yeah, like story confused. blocks. I they yeah. Both did, so yeah. Yeah. No, the World War Two campaign was actually pretty damn fun. So I I thought it was actually really good too, um, yeah. story wise. So uh, another game soon that came out, a game near and dear to your heart. And some of our listeners from some of the mail we get. Um, Madden. Uh, and I'm kidding about the listeners part. Because, you know, sometimes our listeners think we talk too much Madden. But there's a new game. So let's talk about it for a second. And Stephen, I, I know Madden's truly near and dear to your heart. Yeah, it's something. <laughs> so uh, I, I wrote the review for Madden 21 for our site. And um, yeah, I mean, it's... It's good and not good all at the same time. Yeah. And it's so hard to describe it. Like, let's let's start with the yard. So the yard is this new mode. It's 6v6. It's, it's meant to be like, you know, backyard football. Think like, you know, NFL Street or FIFA Street or whatever. Or, see, what was the name of that um, NHL game? This was back on 360 where... 
you know, was super tiny ranks and you could get like, your, your players could either become super tiny or huge. I thought that was NHL like 3v3 or NHL 3s or something. Like some, yeah, it might have been NHL 3s. Um, and I'm sure somebody will let us know, but that game was really fun. Uh, the the yard in Madden 21, I know it's the big selling point this year, but in a way it feels like the mode nobody really asked for. When you have a bunch of people begging for them to enhance franchise more. What, what are your thoughts on the yard? I, you, I know you played at least one match. Oh, Steven's out for a second. Yeah, so. I was muted. My bad. Um, <laughs> You're good. <laughs> uh, that's 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 on my fault. I did look it up. It's three on three NHL arcade was the name of the game. There so, you go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that game was fun. But yeah, mm -hmm. so I did play the yard and then I immediately stopped playing the yard because <laughs> I could not focus. Um, so I loved Volta in the, the last year's like FIFA, FIFA. which I, yeah. I know that's kind of the route they were going. Um, all the Plus EA we games, watched, well, we got to watch people f play Volta in front of our very eyes. Yeah, that was actually really cool. The little, like, I love soccer yeah. um, or football. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> I, I very much enjoy watching it. Um, that so was that, at so EA that play was last fun year. At EA yeah. Play, yeah. Watching the little, like, w what was Volta. It was. It was cool. So it's mm -hmm. funny. Madden Back when we were allowed to go be around other people. Sure. You know. Yeah. So so Madden was the last game to, like in the in the EA like stable to to have that, like street mode because NHL did with the the ones and the one v one v one and and the, like outdoor hockey they've had a couple years and then obviously FIFA had Volta. So EA, Madden was like the last one to do to do the version. But yeah, I immediately turned it off. Like I. I played like one round of offense and I was like, I couldn't do this. I could not focus on who was on my team and who's not. And I'm colorblind, so that does not help at all. Um, but everyone's like in random jerseys and it just didn't work for me. It's weird because I never had that issue in Volton. I didn't have that issue in NHL um, when the, in the street version with people in random uniforms, random colors. But in Madden, it just, I don't know. It did not work. And so I did... Uh, I just didn't like it, and then I stopped. And you know, I jokingly tell Tyler every time that I uninstalled Madden. Um, <laughs> and the last time I told him that, you know, the next time we're playing the game, I'm just gonna uninstall it like mid mid game. And it's not mm -hmm. that I'm like mid losing, because I I think I beat you um, in Madden 20 like one game, and then I just it's just not fun. I don't have fun in Madden anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I mean. It's not for me, but, it, you know, it's cool they, they brought something new, but I, I would like to see them touch upon the franchise mode, which I know a lot of people want. But tell us about what you liked about Madden. Cause you, well, you first, let me, first let me touch on the yard, okay? Okay. Like, for a sec. Um, I'm with you 100% on it. It's overload. It's, like, too much crap happening at the same time. Like, I just want to play football for, like, and... <sighs> Here's the thing, like if you give me Madden where you make Ultimate Team like Diamond Dynasty and MLB The Show where good players that will help your team are attainable it, without spending money if you play it and play it well but not need to make it the only game you own, you know? Um, and you give me a franchise mode where I can play as my favorite team, manage that team over multiple seasons, either connected or not, but make it an immersive experience that actually makes me feel like I'm, you know, um, running an NFL team. And, and the, the decisions I'm making are actually impactful and not just checking boxes. They don't do either of those things, okay? So, uh, that said, like, when you get into a game and play, it's still fun. Is it perfect? No, but I, part of it's me, like, I don't expect yearly sports iterations to be perfect games. They're always gonna have glitches. It is the nature of a yearly development cycle. Um, and I know there's fans out there right now screaming at whatever they're listening to us on saying, well, then don't make it every year. That's not realistic because the reason that EA makes and publishes these games is to make money and people will buy it every year, so they're going to make it every year. So, I'm not saying even that, you know, the game wouldn't benefit from becoming a bi-yearly release. I'm just saying that it's not going to happen, so let's just not, you know? It's wasted breath to have that conversation. I know. Um, 
the running game is dramatically improved in the sense that it's not super dominant like it was in Madden 20, where you know so you could run like stretch plays or outside runs, and just knock off like eight to fifteen yards in, in per clip. You know, mm -hmm. um, it was really easy to dominate using the ground game. And if you got ahead in the second half and you could just run the ball the rest of the game. That's corrected. The AI to me is one of the most impressive things in Madden 21. You have AI that now studies your tendencies and adjusts. So you can't be the player that has three plays that you like to cycle through, you know? Yeah. You've actually got to play and you've got to match up and you have to call good plays and you have to call lots of different kinds of plays in order to be effective. Also, it comes down to the one-on-one -on -one matchups too. So if you like to play, like I like to take a defensive lineman. I know there's a lot of people that like to use their like linebackers or or safeties. I like to use her on the defensive line and try to get pressure to the quarterback. But this year, you can't use the same move all the time. So if your guy was a power move guy in the past, you just spam the power move and you're home half the time, right? You're getting pressure on the quarterback, causing bad throws or generating picks or fumbles or whatever. Um, that's not the case anymore. The offensive lineman is going to read the type of move you use, and if you use it too much, they're going to adjust, and it's going to become ineffective. See, that's so weird to me because in previous mm -hmm. games, you, depending on the lineman itself, was whether you used finesse or power moves. Right. Like, yep. it, it, yeah, if you were running a, like a power lineman, you had to use the whatever A mm -hmm. button, I think, for that, and X was finesse. I can't remember off the top of my head, mm -hmm. but... It's nice to see that that they switched up, um, and it's it's nice too because it, it reflects actually the real NFL because some guys are great power rushers and some are better finesse move guys, and depending on who they're matched up against on the offensive line that week on that team, it, there might be somebody who can shut them down. Yeah, you know they might be really good overall, but just have that guy that they can't do anything against, and that'll show in this year's game. Now, are there still glitches? For sure. The people online, I man, I love playing online and I hate it all at the same time. Because here's the thing. Online, um, running quarterbacks are, are everything in this game. They are super powered. Think Terrell Owens in 2K5. Um, but at the quarterback version of it, especially if you can, uh, for running quarterbacks. So, um, Lamar Jackson... Uh, Kyler Murray, etc. Right? Mm -hmm. Those guys are superhuman in this game. So every time you play online, you're playing the Ravens, or you're playing some take the Cardinals, or you're playing other teams with good running quarterbacks. The best quarterback in the game should be Patrick Mahomes. And that, I don't even know if it should be that close. Um, ratings wise, that plays out. Mahomes is a 99, and Lamar Jackson's a 94, and I think there's there's one guy in between Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson's the other one, the Seahawks, everybody uses too. So, um, Mahomes is a 99, uh, Wilson I think is a 97, 98, 90, maybe somewhere between 96, 98, and then Jackson's a 94. Well, Lamar Jackson is a like 10 times more effective player to play with, so in Ultimate Team and Versus, like, everybody's using him. It makes it not as fun. Everybody's also running the same kind of play that they did last year where they roll the quarterback out to the sideline and then magically there's a receiver wide open or if you haven't covered, they take off down the field the quarterback and they're gaining 15, 20 yards either way. Yep. That's not fun either. Nope. So I'm hoping that that gets patched, you know, silly me. It sounds like I probably rated this game a six. I didn't. I actually gave the game an 8.1 because it is fun. Like, some, a lot of the core things are fun. They've put a lot into face of the franchise, which is nice. Um, think, like, be a pro mode. Yeah. But uh, the interactions that you have are more than just, like, a little bit of trash talking and then, oh, here's your goal as a result of that trash talking. It's a little more deep than that. And they have a decent cast. Like, Snoop Dogg's part of the cast in the game this year. Um, uh, Robert Patrick of... Terminator 2 fame, Steven? Oh. As the T-1000. Guess what? And, yeah, I'm uh, uninstalling after this is done. <laughs> <laughs> and he was on the X-Files as Agent Doggett in the last two seasons, among other things that he's been a part of. So he uh, he's part of the cast as well. Um, Rich Eisen is playing himself um, and others. So 
like it, they've invested into that mode this year so that's good um overall i gave the game like i said made point one um it is fun if you like super fast-paced chaotic stuff you'll like the yard i don't uh, the, and the the uniforms are just too distracting and confusing for me okay so well it's got yeah. it's not just a colorblind issue because i thought it, it might be but you know I, I no, just, it's just it's too much like i don't know Maybe I just need to so. take a year off of the Madden game or t or three, and then come yeah, back. yeah. I I you know I still enjoy like good old connected franchise. Like that's fun. Mm, is um, it though? It is. You hey, we had a Madden tournament. And Steven made it what to the title game? Yeah, on fort, or, on yeah. fort, as they say. Yeah. But you pulled a accident. massive upset. I did. Yeah, so that was fun. It was um, something. <laughs> and. Uh, but yeah, so we had a good uh, we had a good time doing that, and but no, I would take part in like a connected franchise again. But yeah, I don't know. I, I don't see myself going all in on Ultimate Team this year. I, I'm to be honest, I'm having way too much fun sports game wise with PGA Tour, um, close circuit to 2K. Could you fix your damn leaderboards, please? Without the need to just uninstall and reinstall the game. To get yeah, it so I, I reach out to 2K support, right? Because here's what's happening. They, I play a lot of online, and I'm, I'm all right at the game. And I kind of want to see where I'm rated, where I'm ranked. And I, it just doesn't show up. Or it still has me still having a record of 5-1-1. One, and one, Yeah. Which I probably had last weekend. <laughs> you know? Sure. But anyway, um, they, they get back to me, and they say, here's what you do. You clear your cache, so you go and um, do a reset of your console, or you unplug. If that doesn't work, you unplug everything and then reset it. And if that doesn't work, uninstall the game and reinstall it. Cool. So I did all three of those things, and finally, after uninstalling and reinstalling, it did an update to five and one and one from showing nothing. Okay. Today, it still sits at five one and one. After I've played another, what, 20, 30 matches? Um, not super impressed with that. Yeah. I'm loving the game. The game is fun. It's it's skewed too hard, I think. Um, f too hard to keep a really good um, player base around. Yeah, especially for online um because i yep. switched back down to pro-am last night because i just wanted to you know have fun and it's so easy comparatively and it's not that it's just it feels like there's such a big gap in those difficulties are right next to each other so mm -hmm. i don't quite understand that and then there's two harder difficulties above pro and i, I know, don't know I, how, who was God. playing with that um, <laughs> but the game is fun for a golf game. But if you're just it looking is. for fun, I mean, we, we mentioned it last week, so there's no mm -hmm. no point repeating ourselves. But yeah, if you're trying to just yeah. play solo, you'll be fine. If you're trying to play mm -hmm. online, I mean, there is a, a, a skill gap, and you have to kind of learn. It is easier if you're playing two v two because you, if especially yeah. if your your partner is is better at the game than you are, like me with Tyler. Like I'm better at at golf games than he is. Yeah. So okay. I'm you know <laughs> putting him on my back. It's like I'm better at just like I'm better at Halo. Yeah, exactly. So I'm putting yeah. him on my back and hard carrying him through the game. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. But you know. It, it's fun if you're looking for a golf game, but yeah, I mean, it's so that's such a silly fix, and you you guys should patch that HP Studios and two. It's a lazy fix. Yeah, tell like us. Like to ask me to do yeah. all the work. There are people Come with on. data caps that cannot afford to reinstall the game. I mean, no you're not looking at like huge install, but you know, it's enough. And the only Stephen, the only work I should have had to do to enjoy the full suite of the game is enter my credit card number. Yeah. To buy it. That's it. Like, I shouldn't have to go do all these fixes for them. They need to fix that on their end. Anyway, that's end of my rant about sports games. So Right. And Tyler, um, so this week was opening. So, you know, a weird segue, but it's happening. Sure. <laughs> this week was opening night uh, live at Gamescom, including more Gamescom stuff throughout the weekend. But before mm -hmm. we touch on that, Tyler, you want to take us over to Bet Online for... A quick app. I would love to um, very shortly here. <laughs> um, so our our copy got uh, taken away. 
There it is. Sorry about that. All right. Yeah, sorry about that, everybody. Sports keep coming back. So there's your chance to bet on them with our exclusive wagering partner, betonline.ag. Major League Baseball is back. It started. Uh, the Twins didn't get that memo today. But it's in full swing, and there's no shortage of ways to get in on the action at Bet Online, where they have all the odds, futures, and props for you to bet on. And as sports started to return, Bet Online has sat down with Eddie George from the NFL, Robert Ory, the seven time NBA champ, and Harold Reynolds from Major League Baseball to get their opinions on what it's going to be like playing without fans and what they call the fandemic. Visit betonline.ag today to check out all the odds and up-to-date sports news. And don't forget to sign up and take advantage of all the welcome back to sports bonuses at BetOnline, your online wagering expert. So, Stephen, your thoughts on the NFL with some teams having fans and others not? Um, no comment here because I don't want to get in, in trouble. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's silly and it's stupid, and you know what? If you want to go to the games, go ahead. Um, I would not come anywhere close to an NFL stadium right now whatsoever. I think that's the mm -hmm. quickest way to make sure the NFL season does not happen, which I already don't think it's going to happen anyways. But we'll see. Um, who knows? Well, it's going to start. It's not – I don't know about finish. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're going to move on. To games. Yeah, so. <laughs> uh, so, yes, opening night live was this Thursday. Um, mm -hmm. It's called opening night, even though it was recorded in L.A. and happening at 11 a.m. Um, but it was nighttime in Germany. Right. So. I, I, I'm aware. Yeah. Sure. Germany is the main yeah. set of Gamescom. Usually uh, mm -hmm. Jeff Keighley was, was in L.A. Yeah. I watched it live. I wish I didn't waste my two hours watching that. Uh, it was a <laughs> snooze fest. I mean, the problem with, with opening night live to me was they... They did this knowingly, hyping it up with a bunch of world premieres, but then they're like, well, what we mean by that is, I mean, there's not going to be, you know, at the last second, they kind of walked that back and was like, well, there's not going to be new things. What they meant was they're going to be world premiere trailers for games we already know existed. Yeah. So yeah. there wasn't much new. Um, I was very bored. I did not enjoy it. I wish I didn't waste You shared that with me a few times. Um, so... Yeah, and you know I'm in the middle of this stressful week because I this is this whole new program is brand new to me um, with a lot of like work that's different than what I'm used to with school. Uh, mm. So like it, it it just made me extra mad because I was like I could have been doing two hours worth of work for the program and not watching this thing, but whatever. Um, Tyler, did you get a chance to watch like it again, replayed or watch uh, videos from it or anything? No, I got to see most, well, good part of of uh, Nintendo and PlayStation Live at uh, when I was at work. Uh, we we're on a conference call, don't tell anyone, and I had YouTube open with very low volume <laughs> while I was muted. Well, we'll keep that. So, for you. yeah. Um, here's the thing. The, I agree with you on the show. It's, it's a lot of stuff we've seen before. Um, this summer, to me has been one giant advertisement for E3. Yeah. And what I mean by that is that there's a reason E3 exists. It does, you know, it, it's not perfect. It has flaws, but it is far better at this than these other things. And I also have a real problem with having one person or one outlet or anything start to dominate the coverage of these events. I think that's um, very unhealthy for the industry and for fans. So, the and, and I know there's people like, well, you want E3 to have everything? Well, the ESA... Um, has members of most of the publishers and console makers on the board. So there's a lot of voices going into the decision-making process there for E3. And I know that the, like the event of Gamescom itself isn't controlled by, you know, the, the one person or the one outlet, but they, uh, but the coverage is. And the coverage defines the event. So, 
I, I don't like that. I don't want it to continue. And, and I think that, you know, going back to any three where we bring all sorts of outlets, large and small together and have different voices and different takes is good. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, so from the opening night live, was there anything that like really stood out to you? Cause- no, honestly, <laughs> I mean, I, I wish I could say, yeah, I, I hope you have something, because nothing really to me. So, we saw a trailer for, like, I think it's called Unknown 9 Awakening, which was, like, intriguing, mm-hmm. but it was a tease, and who knows what the gameplay's going to look like. Um, that was really the only new thing. Uh, also, well, Little Nightmares 2. I, you reviewed the first one, if I remember correctly, Tyler. No, I didn't review it, but I played a decent chunk of it, and I liked it. Okay. It was good. Uh, yeah, so, you know, that that's coming we we saw more on 12 minutes which i know a lot of people are excited for and mm-hmm. I, I don't understand stand why per se did they did i miss it did they show a game there called dark with a q uh that doesn't ring a bell so i was watching some of the coverage today where they do a little bit deeper dives you know and they showed that game and it actually looks kind of interesting it's it's one of those like puzzle games think like inside you mm-hmm. know and that type of thing um, but it's coming to consoles. The interesting thing is it has a little bit of a spooky vibe, but not like scary. It's just that setting. Sure. And, um, so part of the thing is like the, the character loses his head. Well, he doesn't lose it, but it can detach. Hmm. And then it's almost like playing co-op, but not because you're controlling both the head and the body to do different things and solve puzzles. So sometimes the head is the only thing that can get into an area. So you have to do it to unlock something or move something. Not every game shown at opening night live. Um, sorry. There were games that were not shown at opening night live. That's a better play- way to word it. Uh, that yeah. are still at the show. So not everything. Oh, yeah. at the show. Sure. You, right. Yeah. I'm just saying this That one stood out to me. I saw it today. No, that sounds cool. It stood out. Yeah, it stood, it stood out more. But I like games like that. Uh, it's it starts to be more than the stuff I did see um, from the show itself. Yeah. So real like a real quick rundown. Like we saw mm-hmm. the Doom Eternal, the Ancient Gods like expansion, which is interesting if yep. you're a fan of that. Uh, the Dragon Age behind the scenes stuff. We still don't know when that game's coming, um, but that's that's cool. Uh, obviously, what was missing was a Mass Effect trilogy remaster or even a Dragon Age trilogy remaster. I'll take either or. Mm-hmm. Um, we saw more on Star Wars uh, Squadrons single player, and for yeah. me, that made me even less excited for the game, and I already wasn't that excited <laughs> for it. So I don't know about you. Nah, I'm not a fan. I'm not a big, like, flying game type of guy anyway, and, like, the the Star Wars part makes me want to play it, but, man, I, I feel like I would buy that game, play it for a week, and never touch it again. Yeah. Um, so, so we'll see. But like, it's it's not. It, that's more of a personal taste thing. I'm not running down the game. No, the game might be good. Right. I just am not that yeah. interested in. Well, it's funny because yeah. as much as I'm loving Microsoft Flight Sim, like it's one of my favorite games mm-hmm. right now. Um, I'm not interested in in combat. I don't like that's the yeah. combat, and yeah, I yeah. don't even consider it. It's not the same. I don't think. Um, but you know, no, it's a, one's a simulation game, and the other is a combat. Yeah. A space fantasy game you know so even even sure. more negative news or saddening news is we saw mm-hmm. another push of lego star wars the skywalker saga uh, into 2021 though mm-hmm. i think that might be the final push it's looking like it's it's kind of set I, uh, I hope so I'm, I'm not quite sure what the release date is if they announce it but it's into 2021 we saw it at e3 last year we did an interview we loved the game um, it yep. looks so awesome. We are so excited to play it. Remember, though, Tyler, when we thought that the game might come out along with the movie release of Episode Nine? I was well. We thought the along with the Blu-ray release. No, right? I, well, and I thought we first thought it was the. Yeah, because didn't they? Well, didn't they actually say at one point that it was coming in 2019? I don't, I don't think know. they but said they, that. I think we were just yeah, hopeful. We were we were and hoping. Then we hoped again. But then they did. Yeah. Well, no, they did say spring 2020 though. At one okay, point. Yeah. yeah. And and that's why I thought okay along alongside the Blu-ray the 4K like that would have made a lot of sense. Now my question, Stephen, is: Do you think they can redo Episode Nine to line up with the game release? <laughs> oh, you mean like remake the movie better? Yes. They won't. 
Oh, I, I don't, you can do it with puppets on strings here in my <laughs> my desk, and it'll be better. I mean... Yeah, you know from someone who watches those movies, like, every night before he goes to bed? Um, and I'm not kidding. It's literally, like, every night. It is not literally every so night. How many times have you seen the original trilogy? Like, 2,000 at this point? Mm, I don't think it's that many. I think that's probably really strong assessment or guess um it's certainly well into the hundreds though well so you turn them um, on and then you like pass out because you've seen them before yeah like i don't watch them beginning to end but i can tell you like i i don't know if i could right now but i knew at one point um the opening like line to every movie i remember Graham was so disappointed in me yeah, I, when i was saying that but you know the movie's not good when when tyler doesn't like it as someone who's such a big Star Wars fan. But anyways... I wanted to love I, it. I know you did. I did. And we did at first, and then... Because it's just... It was hard to process anything because of how busy it was. Yeah. But let's not go down that rabbit hole. We've yeah, done that a million not. times. Um, so I'm, I'm actually torn here where to go from here because there's two things I want to touch on. Um, okay. Pick one. The first thing segues into what we're going to talk about next. So I'm going to pick the other one. So we okay. saw Fall Guys Season 2 sneak peek, um, which, again... Fall Guys is so fun. It's taken the world by storm. It, you know, it came to PS Plus day one, basically. It's hugely popular on Steam. Mm. It's one of the top games being streamed. It's like, you know, from a tiny dev, made a fantastic game that is extremely fun. Mm. And once again, it's PlayStation exclusive timed. So PlayStation had the Rocket League thing where... It came to PS Plus. It you know it grew immensely in popularity. Uh, it's hugely successful, and then came to Xbox later. Um, Fall Guys. It's going to come to Xbox. I think I'm pretty sure. I'm like 95 percent sure. Um, but it's definitely only on PlayStation right now. It will eventually. Uh, Microsoft needs to stop letting these types of games slip into the cracks. I mean, Microsoft has bought the rights for third party publishing games. They need mm -hmm. something like this. The, if they could get this game to be an Xbox exclusive, even for time, or something like this, it would be so helpful for their brand, and they always seem to miss it. And then, you know, those that only have the Xbox don't get a chance to, to play, because not every computer can run games super well. Um, I have a PlayStation. I've been playing it on PlayStation. I could get it on Steam and play it there, too. I just like playing on my couch more. So Xbox needs to do this, you know? They need something like I, this. You know, I, I know what I want to say here, but forgive me if I botch it um, in terms of how to say it. But here's what, I, here's what I think. I think Microsoft has a disconnect with video game fans because I think Microsoft caters to... Um, hardcore fans sometimes when it comes to shared experience type of games. And what I mean by that is like, yeah, Steven, they, they buy the third party games, right? And we'll do that. But the ones that they do that are multiplayer focused are ones that are super ultra competitive. I'm going to own you, you know, and then teabag you. <laughs> right. Sure. Whereas Sony not PlayStation is not known as much for being the place to go to play competitive multiplayer, right? That Xbox kind of owns that, that perception at least. But the two games PlayStation has <laughs> invested a lot into in the, the PS Plus realm that are shared experiences and play together and all that stuff are games that are super fun to play together, not against each other. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, you're competing, but it's not about owning everybody, and there's no be teabagging and any of that crap. Like, everybody's having a great time. But and the key is, you don't have to be good at it to like it. Yeah, I think that's... Because there are, you know, trolls in, um, sure. in, in Fall Guys. I find it hilarious, mm. though, because people will try to block you, or they'll wait yeah. at the end until you get close and then cross the finish line for you. Right. It, and it's funny. Um, I guess it's more funny if it's not happening to you. I, I can't say it would be funny otherwise. And like Rocket League, I assume that was oh, the other not, game you were talking yeah. about. You are competing. Yeah, and there sure. are ranked games, but you can play casually, well, sure. and there are a lot of fun modes, mm -hmm. and it is just kind of fun to screw around in. Yeah. And Microsoft does do... But it's not that fight to the death feel. Right. 
you know? Yeah. Or the yeah the super serious. Even if it's not competitive, uh, they they don't have the the fun games. I don't think as much. Um, even like yeah. when you look at because we saw more Ratchet and Clank, and that's that. I mean, it's still like a shooter, but it's fun. I mean, anyone has played Ratchet Clank game. It's cartoony. It looks really fun. It doesn't take itself seriously, and Microsoft tends to do that to themselves. They take themselves way too seriously, and they they tend to forget that you know some people like just playing for fun. Um, not every game needs a like Oscar, well not Oscar winning, but you know what I mean, like a Pulitzer Prize winning story type thing, right. or you know, super serious, dark, lots of browns and grays, color wise. Mm-hmm. And so I think Microsoft could needs to start learning this lesson that you know, make these fun games. Um, and and get them out there because even Cuphead like is brutally difficult. Like it's cartoony and it's awesome. It is. It's so it shouldn't hard. be that hard. Um, it doesn't need to be that hard. Well, I I don't care that it's that hard. I just think that that doesn't count for what you you want. I'm, oh, I'm okay sure. that they make games difficult. I I like difficult games. I love the Dark Souls series. I love. Oh sure. And it, I'm fine with Cuphead being difficult, but don't count that as your cartoony super fun game because it's right. not for everyone. <laughs> yeah. There are people that don't like that that difficulty level and that's fine some people don't like playing super hard games and want to just play for fun so learn this mm-hmm. lesson microsoft we'll see if it if they if they learn it in a couple of years um it's going to take a while to see this is this is a long-term strategy rather than a short term you know i think one of the things is and this is getting really like you know twenty thousand feet level talking about this but PlayStation players are super passionate because they feel like they're part of the PlayStation, like, group or family or what You know what I mean? And I don't know that Xbox fans have that sentiment to to that degree. And I said it on the show uh, last week or the week before. The, The one time I felt part of something on Xbox was when 1 vs. 100 was around. And that was when Xbox really got it right. It was like appointment gaming. Everybody came out on those nights, a couple nights a week, at those times, to play. And, you know, I think it's getting along the lines of the same type of thing. Obviously, they're very different experiences, right? One's actually playing a game, and the other one's very much like a game show. But they're both interactive, and they both bring people together, and I think those experiences are good. Um... And I think especially in this year, Stephen, like things that bring people together are refreshing and nice. Yeah. So. All right. Um, uh, getting off of the Microsoft thing, because we, we talked a lot last week. Yeah. So if you didn't listen to last week's right. episode, go listen to that, because, you know, we had our mm-hmm. own issues. Now let's get into the, the whole publisher versus developer versus gamer <laughs> aspect. So I want to start off. So yeah. at Gamescom, uh, we saw... Uh, a trailer for The Sims 4 Star Wars The Journey to Batuu right and surface mm-hmm. level wise like I thought no big deal you know it's cool I, it, it's it's fun um, and then I was I was looking at and kind of going down the not the rabbit hole per se but learning about The Sims 4 community because there are a lot of people that love The Sims and they only play The Sims right and they mm-hmm. ask for certain things and then they don't get those certain things. They get things like this. Things that they're not asking for because they want a more... Like, people play The Sims to kind of, like... The, it's the same reason most people play any, like, simulation-type game. You want to experience. You want to kind of create your own world. Stuff you can't necessarily do in real life. And, you know, you want to have, like, a mansion if you're living in not a mansion, right? And you Or, you, you know, there's, mm-hmm. there's a lot of choices. And... When you see these publishers, because this is definitely an EA thing. Um, well, the game's made by them too, but it's a side point. So you see them put this stuff out, right? This is definitely just to get people that are interested in Star Wars to buy The Sims, buy this expansion, spend the money. And it's like they don't care about their their user base um, that, that continuously plays these games. Right, because they're not listening to them; they're only listening to yeah. their shareholders, and they know that because they already have the Star Wars license, um, right? So, yep. they they know they can make a ton of money off of this, um, and so I, I just want to get your thoughts on the whole whole publisher thing because we also saw that Activision uh, is announcing that all next gen games are going to seventy. We already saw a I think it was two K. 
basically announced the same thing. Yeah. Um, so. Well, they, they said for NBA 2K anyway. Well, that, that so, yeah. means it's happening. It's going to happen. All these right. games of are course. going to be yep. 70 next gen. Um, yep. So so talk about, about that, Tyler, like the publisher-wise. Yeah. So, well, we first of all, we had uh, an article on our site this week about that sort of dynamic, and I, I encourage everybody to go check it out. Um, it's not terribly gentle. Um, it's a strong argument, which which I have no problem with, as long as you know, as long as we can support it um, with evidence. But uh, you asked me my take here. I guess it is. I mean, publishers are always going to do what's going to bring more money and more people into the fold. Once you're in and spending money, they don't care about you. They care about who else they can get in to spend money. Because once you're in, I mean, we we kind of act like the, you know, the poor puppy that got hit by someone, you know. Like, we, we go up to the person we want to be loved, but then they put their hand out and we flinch, you know. Yeah. But we still want to be pet. And we, we become part of a game uh, community, and we invest a certain amount of money into it, and then no matter how much they crap on us, we just keep going back because part of it is it's what we know and like and we made friendships playing there. I mean, I don't... You know, I think there's a lot of that to it. They know that. They know once they have you, they're probably going to keep you. And people love to say, I'm not buying the game this year. BS. Yes, you are. Everybody who says to you they're not buying Madden this year, they're not buying FIFA, they're not buying whatever, Right. They're full of crap, and we all know it, in 99 point something percent of the time. Of course, there's some people that are going to fall through. So they know that. Publishers are always out to make more money. Devs, on the other hand, tend to be more interested in keeping the player base happy, right? right. So there's, they're not always, you know, aligned in interests, and we saw that play out publicly sometimes with things like Bungie leaving Activision. Um, who do you think is the worst publisher for this stuff? See, it's tough. I mean, obviously EA is the popular answer. They used to be the most hated company in America. I don't think they are, though. Um, which was silly, because Comcast existed. But mm. that's beside the point. Uh, yeah. It's, it's definitely, I think, a tie between 2K and Activision. It's really hard to choose. And I mm. think there's an honorable mention to Rockstar. Um, and I know they they also develop games, but, man, they I don't think we're getting a GTA 6 or a Red Dead Redemption 3 anytime uh, soon with mm. how much money they can make off of, um, off of that. Right. And, uh, honestly, you, you can make the argument for Bethesda as well. So I think it's just an industry issue. I don't think it's one single publisher. I think because mm. one does it, the other ones can, can do it from there. I don't think they're in, unhappy when... When like 2K makes a decision or Activision Activision makes a decision because now they can do it and they won't get the flack for it because the others already did it and and did yeah. it. They, they did it already. So I actually, yeah, I actually don't like think EA is as bad as people make them out to be. Like EA just, he's just not as good as we hope they'd be. You know, for for how big they are. My biggest problem with EA is that a lot of times their games disappoint. Um, Activision's games don't disappoint all that often, but they are money grabs through and through in every part of some of their games. Whereas in EA, like EA Sports, I mean, it's really just Ultimate Team. And I know they, they try to get you to nudge you into it, you know, to play it, but you don't have to. Well, it's... You can play lots of other modes independently of it. It's not just you Ultimate know. Team because Battlefront had a Right, I know. No, I know. But I know that but they have at least addressed that and they're not doing that anymore, at least for a little bit. Now I'm sure they'll try again. Right? Um I wish I could remember what the EA lady said at that hearing. I don't. Because it was really ludicrous, but I can't remember what she said. Yeah. Um, I, but yeah, I, I I go with Activision right now. Yeah, I think it's Activision. Two K is really close. Yeah. Um, in some sense. Here, here's my thing. I 
I really don't care that much about games going up to $70. I'm not, I know I'm not in the majority there. But first of all, inflation's a real thing, right? Yeah. Um, and games do cost more to develop now than they did before. But now here's the caveat to all that. I'd be fine with games going up 70 or even 80, honestly, if it meant microtransactions left and right through and through weren't going to be a thing. But I don't think that's the case. I think they're going to try to get both. Yeah, they're going to definitely have their cake and eat it, too. It's, mm-hmm. That's 100% right. Um, yeah, they're not going away. So it's going to 70, and there'll be microtransactions. And I don't think the devs want them in the games. I think it's something forced by publishers at times. And I mm-hmm. think it was 100% the case in in uh, Bungie and, and Activision-like thing. Because I don't even think Destiny 2 would have been made if they were self-publishing. Uh, I think that was strictly an Activision thing. And yeah. it sucks because I don't even know where that money is going, like the money made on microtransactions. I'd imagine most of it goes to the publishers. Oh, for sure. It's it's going to publishers, it's going to shareholders, and to, to you know the bonus structure of executives. So like 100% it is. Um, here's, one, here's one place where, you know, I know we're an Xbox podcast, but Sony and PlayStation deserve a lot of credit because... They greenlight a lot of major AAA, you know, make the case to buy our console type of games that are single player experiences that don't have microtransactions. And there's something to be said for that. Because way too many publishers now, I promise you, have meetings that involve the question well, that's a great idea, but how can we monetize it? And. That doesn't happen as much there. Yeah, I would actually argue for Xbox here too, especially now. Um, mm. I think if yeah, I, yeah. if Don Matrick was still in charge, we would be arguing something different. <laughs> but Sony and Microsoft are actually really good about this not nickel and diming us, um, per se. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Nintendo, you could make the argument that they do. They don't necessarily have the microtransactions too much, but their games never go down in price. They're never on sale. No. Um, and they, they always seem to make limited quantities of whatever like the, their switches and all that is always sold out because that I, I think they they kind of create this oh they create yes, demand that's for sure how i was trying to word it yeah. um but mm-hmm. it's funny how the two console makers like the big ones uh well I, nintendo is big i don't want to say that they're not but they don't really they're, they're pretty good yeah. they're probably the best of the publishers uh I, I think thq nordic actually does a good job too i know they're not Yep. Looked at as as big, but I, I haven't noticed many issues in their games. Um, I reviewed Desperados. Bethesda three. used to. What? Bethesda used to um, do a good job. Yeah, Fallout seventy six. Not so much now. So, going more recent, Tyler. Speaking and speaking of Marvel Avengers, because we were talking about mm-hmm. that, uh, we did find out that they're gonna have battle passes for their DLC characters but they're going to be exclude like <laughs> yeah. the battle pass are going to be specifically for each each new new character so you're going to have to buy a bunch of new battle passes for all the different characters what do you think about that do we know how much they are do we know how much no they but are? I imagine ten dollars that's like generally the price of battle passes ten to fifteen so so it's complete garbage and and honestly they should be Embarrassed, I know they're not. But man, like how many times do I need to pay to get the full experience of a game? I know. And that's that's what's frustrating. Now there are some games where I know. Like back in the day, see when I played NHL like crazy. I knew that when I bought the new NHL, you know, twelve or thirteen or whatever the hell. I was going to get hundreds and hundreds of hours of enjoyment sure. out of that. So, like, the first, and I knew I played EASHL. So, the first thing I went and did was bought the, the, the pack for my EASHL player to get the attributes up, you know, to give me points to spend to get the attributes up to be competitive right away. And I, I never cared about spending that money because I knew that NHL gave me more than $60 worth of enjoyment. Yeah. For me, right? But I was able to make that call. And now, 
to get these full experiences in these games, they're telling you you have to spend more than the cost of the game, and that's a, that's a problem for me. Yeah, I think it depends what's in the Battle Pass. I don't yeah, hate the Battle Pass sure. model. Um, a lot of games have it. I think, actually, I really like the Battle Pass model. Um, I think it's a good way to to have something to, to play for and most of the time you don't have to spend money or you spend it once like if you're in Fortnite, you spend it once and if you just play enough you you usually earn enough of like the the coins or whatever it is in Fortnite to to get the next battle pass um and most of the stuff in the battle pass is skins for characters so if that's the case but it's really hard when you when they're they're going to be individualized battle passes to think it's only going to be skins part of me thinks there'll also be equipment in there that might be special and do special things and and that's where i have the issue if battle passes are just for skins no problem don't care but as soon as you start throwing equipment that's exclusive to the battle pass then i i start to to question it and it's not like there's yeah. other games you know i i've been on a, a smite kick at least watching it smite has battle passes and it's just for skins for gods the gods in the game and some gods may not get skins but you you don't have to buy battle passes for each indiv individualized god whereas i, th I mm -hmm. think it's just kind of a shitty practice um well let's face it like this is a superhero game and superheroes have super fans and it, not just of the mcu the movies but the the comics themselves right so a lot of these you know costumes skins whatever that are gonna refer to you know some comic from 1972 or something yeah. right there are a lot of people that are gonna want that and they know that so that's why they're doing this and i don't know i just is it a good business practice yeah but is it the type of thing that builds consumer trust and makes them want to give you benefit of the doubt absolutely not so I mean, business has never been accused of being, you know, long-term thinking. They're always short-sighted. Yeah. You know, let's make the money today and we'll worry about tomorrow tomorrow. Um, I just, I just don't like it. That's, you know, just me. I get it, but I don't like it. Yep, I don't either. So. All right. What you got next? Something fun oh, and fluffy? No. We're going from bad to worse. Right. Um, Tyler, I'll let okay. you, you kind of bring this one in. There. All right. So, <laughs> Stephen, a topic that is, you know, that gets me fired up is um, journalism in general, but games journalism in particular. Um, I feel like a lot of journalism in our societies under attack and it's not all self or it's not all you know without um being given a reason to level some accusations sometimes but in the games journalism industry i think we've seen um we've seen it mirror i don't want to say real journalism that's unfair to games journalists, but you know, main, you know, like journalists that cover world affairs and things like that, right? Um, where it's gone from actual reporting to being really entertainment based and hot take based. Um, I have a bit of an issue with that. Uh, this week, Kotaku published an article, um, Call of Duty's trailer came out, and the headline, which again, I have huge problems with this headline, Call of Duty trailer recklessly promotes far-right conspiracy theory. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're, we're getting people to come in with, you know, open eyes and, um, you know, no preconceived bias to start with. So that's good. And then it continues to make this argument that the Call of Duty trailer is bad and it's, you know, pushing dangerous ideas and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Let me say this before I turn it back to you for your thoughts. I have no issue with the person writing the article. I think people should be able to speak, even if we don't agree with them. And, in fact, 
I want the people that I think are being ridiculous to have a huge platform and give them a megaphone because then they get to show the world what they think um, and have everybody know that. Uh, so I'm not advocating for saying these things shouldn't exist. I just think that we have gone to a point where journalism isn't about telling the story and letting the reader decide anymore. It's telling us what we think and then either they agree with us or not. And not agree with us after seeing the evidence, but they either agree with us beforehand or they don't, and then they're going to fight it out in the comments amongst each other. What do you think about it? Yeah, I think I think a lot of the times, the a lot of places tend to confuse news and opinion pieces and kind of conflate the two. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's where I have the issue. Uh, I don't yes. have an issue if you post a news article and then you're just like, hey, Call of Duty announced the trailer. Here is the trailer and here's the release date. There you go. And then mm -hmm. you write an opinion piece. And I don't know where, because I don't think Kotaku has like a filing system for their site. Um, but I have seen like IGN do oh. this with, with news I mean, and, and yeah. being actually opinion based. Uh this is a definite opinion piece. Like it's not a, it's not being masqueraded as news. Yeah. So I don't have an issue so, with someone analyzing a piece and saying there's a problem mm. with it. I think that's fine. I, yeah. I had this issue with, I think it was Polygon did it with the Last of Us Two review, where I thought it read as more of a opinion piece on, on like their issues with the game rather than a review. I didn't. It was very. Oh yeah, Wh which game Last was it? Too. Oh yeah, sorry, I missed that. I'm reading the article as I'm listening. So to you. <laughs> again, like so, with, it's it's yeah. hard to to because reviews are like subjective in, on on a lot of ways. Yeah. Like whether you like a system or don't is subjective. You may hate the Dark Souls like die, and if you die again, you lose all the souls and they disappear. And some people love that, right? That's subjective. But mm -hmm. I think to put to make the review like super opinion based is a bit questionable. Um, I thought that would have been a great piece as an opinion piece because people disagree or agree. Like opinion pieces drive traffic because yeah. you either like when you go see that Call of Duty headline, uh, Kotaku headline for Call of Duty, I should say. Like you have immediate visceral reaction whether or not you agree or disagree, and you're gonna go hate read it just so you can go in the comments and be like you're an SJW blah 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 or. You can go in and call everyone Nazis and like and stuff like that, right? Well, that's the problem though is that we know there's no middle ground between those two things now, so we exploit that by sometimes creating things meant to get people really riled up. And I don't know if that's what's happening here, but I do think another thing is showing itself in in games journalism and coverage. And we see it a lot in the YouTube realm, too, where people have, like, this crusade that they're on, one extreme or the other, and then they see it in everything, even where it's not sometimes. And I'm just going to give the example. Like, Stephen, there was the, the article that I still, I mean, I know it, was, it came out in 2019, but it was the dumbest thing I read all year. Thank you for sending it to me. Where, after episode 9 was released for Star Wars, they released this piece about how Star Wars advocates for violence against women. And the article was like, you know, we will be silent no longer on this now that episode 9 has been released. Okay. First of all, how brave of you to wait until all the movies are out so you don't have to risk your access to make your big, courageous point. Two... Time out. You're seeing shit you want to see, and your 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 hero in these movies is female, which is awesome. But there are evil forces that she's fighting as evil forces that do things like try to manipulate and try to hurt you and try to do things like that. And guess what? They're trying to do it to her because she is the person trying to stop them, not because she's female. Yeah. Or, and you know, um, and it's not to, to say that there are, is not the other side of the argument here where there are people that immediately call, like, Ray and Mary Sue because she's a woman. Oh, of course. And 
that's why I said though, Stephen. I said like people yeah. on both sides of the spectrum see what they want to see, and like they 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 feel so strongly about some ideological crusade that they see it in right. Everything. And that's exactly why I felt the need to say that because if I didn't, and the, those that they're gonna think that we're talking about one thing, um, or we think a right. certain way, which you are not able to tell the way we think based on what no. we're saying here. Um, no. But we have to do it. We have to like bring up both sides because otherwise, like I think it's, it's a, it's a, it's a human problem, especially if you're living in like America right now where it's either mm -hmm. you're with us or against us. Like there is no middle ground for anything. Um, and I, I think that's silly. I think both sides are wrong about, you know, and this is again, politics is kind of, it's, it's sad because everything comes down well, to it's politics. All, it's now. crept its way into everything. I mean, there's a reason mm -hmm. the Call of Duty articles talk about the hard, like the hard right. Um, that's political, and yep. it's the same reason why the the Last of Us Two review. There was politics in that. There's pol It's just it's crept into everything. Um, it's just it's tough, man. It's it's hard to like talk about anything deep now because it, there is just this inherent political. I don't even know where I'm going with this. <laughs> to, to well, let me, let, me, let me jump in. Let me jump in. And say, I, I get what you're saying, and I think most of our listeners do too. Like, you, you can't take a stand on anything because all people want to do is label you so they can attack you. Because once you're labeled, you're easy to attack, right? And, and thus dismiss. Because really, what we really want to do is dismiss anything we don't agree with. So, um, well, I'll just say this, like, are there some serious freaking things going on in our world right now? A hundred percent of there, there are, right? And are they things that need to be talked about? Yes. I am not sure that it needs to permeate everything in our lives and it needs to dominate everything all the time, like politics, because like it becomes so overwhelming and exhausting like it can actually affect people's mental health in a lot of ways because all you do is start to see the worst in everyone like steven we've been like look you know we'll pull back the curtain a bit we've fallen victim to this like we're good friends we've and we align very much in many ways when it comes to politics right would you agree with that <laughs> and yet every so often we'll agree 98 percent instead of 100 and then, like, ten minutes later, it's like something where we don't even want to speak to each other. And it's ridiculous. And we are dumb for allowing ourselves to do that. Yeah. But my, my greater point here is sometimes it's okay to just like things for what they are because they're fun. They're video games. And, like, it, I, I'll be honest. Like, I want to play games to escape from that shit. And... This is also the second year in a row where Call of Duty's been dragged, you know, around because people have hot takes right away without any damn context. And immediately, and, and I'm sorry, but this one has come from the same side of the spectrum both times. Um, and, and it's ridiculous. Let them make the game they want to make. And once we see the whole thing and we see the context and we see all of it, then we can judge. Then it's fair. It is not Call of Duty's job and Activision's job to appease everyone's sensibilities on everything. But I, I don't know. It just it drives me nuts. Like, can't we just enjoy anything? No. Um, yeah. I mean, I I get what you're saying, and I think I think that's that's valid. I also think people should just. Keep an open mind when they're reading stuff that like maybe disagrees with them. I would like to see more of that too. Like yeah. instead of immediately going in and just attacking the person writing the article, like read it, mm -hmm. think on it, and then be like, all right, I disagree, but I see your point. Um, but I, I don't, yeah. you know. But that doesn't happen. That that would be anti-internet. Um, what what I'd love to see people do when they disagree is, hey, let's talk more about X, yeah. right? Rather than 
you just think that because you're a yeah. blank. And I would love to see us actually be able to discuss things. Like, I have family members, Stephen, you do too, that you can barely even talk to about anything. And I hate to see that permeate into everything, like absolutely everything. Um, I know people that refuse to watch certain types of movies or watch certain actors now because of their political positions. Both sides. I know people who refuse to watch sports. I know people who refuse to play certain types of games, read certain types of books, etc. Like, okay, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I don't but, care that you do that. Go ahead. You don't want to watch, you know, football, baseball, basketball, whatever. Go ahead. But you're just missing out on things yourself just because you're stubborn and you, you've you let politics. Yeah, you're punishing yeah, you yourself. Let politics just permeate into everything. Um, yeah. So you know, I, yeah, I, I don't want to go too deep into well, too much more deep. No, I want to, I want to. Well, I want to come back to like games journalism for yeah. a second, okay? And um, because that's what we started. And, and again, like we fell for it here, right? Because nothing can't not be about yeah. politics. So, oh, uh, like games journalism, though I. If it's a news article, it needs to be a news article, and it needs to present the ideas and let the reader make up their own mind. An opinion piece, say whatever you want. Like, I'll tell any of our writers, even, including the one we just had post um, on, on NBA 2K, sort of leading the charge on driving up the price of the base price of a game. Um, you can argue whatever you want, but you better be able to back it up, and you better be ready to answer for what you say you know um if you can't do those two things we're not going to publish it so i i wish i could i wish we'd see games journalism go back to really discussing ideas about games rather than sensationalizing and trying to get super visceral reactions out of people because all this is designed to do is get traction in comments get traction on social media and get people really fired up one way or the well, other. Well, and it all comes down to, again, we, we talked about this with the publishing thing. It's money. Um, clicks equal money. Um, you know, we've added ads onto our site. Um, so we're, we're, like, aware of the, the money aspect of it. Like, it's just the way the world works. But I, I think sometimes it's things are tailored just to cause that visceral reaction and just to make sure yes. you piss someone off or, you know... You make someone angry enough to hate click and hate share, because I think there are a good sect of people that, it's meant like in the games journalism on both sides, because you see it on YouTube in the other direction usually, um, that they design these videos or they design these articles just to make people mad enough to share and be like, look at this trash, like let's go, mm -hmm. you, you know, make death threats in the comments, but you know. Which they do, but yeah. it still clicks and it's still money. So everything comes down to money. It yeah. would be like the reason we designed our site. Um, and yes, we did monetize, but it's not just designed. It's not designed to make us a ton of money. We're, we're nowhere thinking that that's going to be the case. I mean, feel free to, to put yeah, us there we, if you we want. Would love but, it, you know. be a bonus. But the like sure. the idea behind the site and the forums is to have a conversation. Let people write what they want to write and then back it up that's what the forums are for we posted the article in the forums you know you can go and disagree or you can agree or whatever you want to do um but instead of you can like people don't attack ideas anymore they just attack the person um mm -hmm. i've been guilty of it before <laughs> sometimes um we all we all do it um but the idea is to have the yeah. like just to talk about games talk about what we like what we don't like talk about the games industry rather than sensational like be sensationalist so here here's my thing and maybe steven <clears throat> excuse me maybe i'm a little influenced by my my rewatching of the west wing that's <laughs> happening right now but one of my visions for our site and our community is that we can have big discussions and we can have big you know talk about big ideas and we can do it in a way that is about ideas and about principle, you know, um, thought and about principle and not about the the motives 
or trying to bring you know winning an argument by defeating someone and bringing them down you know we can talk about things and just share ideas together and agree to disagree at the end of the day and still be friends and still have something in common which we do I, i'm a huge believer like at the end of the day we all have a lot more in common than we have that sets us apart from each other unfortunately too often we focus on what the differences are now instead of what the similarities are and that's no it's certainly true in gaming it's one of the reasons we went to focus just on xbox here we like playstation 2 don't get us wrong but we don't want our community to turn into like a non-stop fanboy war which is what happens when you have everyone right and it's just human nature like everybody needs to think theirs is better their choice um but here we can share a love of xbox we can talk about it we can also have critical discussions about xbox and say you know is this the right move is that the right move how much does delaying halo out hurt things like that and still love xbox at the end of the day and not be bad people for saying it or not be accused of it and whatever right um that's what we want and we want to be able to talk about things in a meaningful way not sensationalize and not chase clicks with like stupid videos we want to have good videos we're going to have video but we're going to try to do it tasteful we're going to try to do it well we're going to try to say things that get people to talk not get people to shout so that's the end of my soapbox right. i think i mean we're not done recording yet so you never <laughs> know but yeah <laughs> i am a little soapboxy so usually it's you well we changed uh jobs here where i'm hosting and, and you get to be the soapbox i think that's the thing yeah but usually you're still the one who goes yeah. off on stuff i'm usually the more balanced <laughs> approach well what are you gonna do <laughs> how about tyler we talk anyway. about the games that are coming uh sure there are marvel's avengers um and all of the battle passes involved uh you can get on 9 4 september 4th it's september already almost not quite my goodness um september 4th friday unless you are really silly and easily convinced and buy the deluxe edition like i did well in that case you can play it on the first so, um, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 is even on the 4th. I think, can you get that one early if you buy the Deluxe I as well? I don't think so, but maybe. I'm not sure, so I don't know. Um, you can pay $70 for NBA 2K21 on the 4th, or you can pay 100 and get it on both consoles. I thought it was Steven. 60 if you're buying it on the Xbox One. Or it's 60 and then, oh, yeah, if you get it, if you get it, um standalone for the new console at 70. That's right. Or, or 100 okay. for My bad. if you want it on both. Yeah. Or 100 if you want to play it on both. You know, not a money grab at all. Um, also, the Legendary Edition or whatever it's called, the, the $100 one, has Kobe Bryant on the cover. I think Steven. all of them have Kobe except um, for the, um, the standard. The, the base game. 60 bucks, yeah, for Damian Lillard? Maybe. Yeah, so... Anyway, that's available on the 4th. And then finally, Ari and the Secret of Seasons available on the 1st. Steven, you played this at E3 and no, really liked it. No, we watched it. someone else play it. Um, this was not a playable demo. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we yeah, did yeah. did an interview. Sorry. Um, it's been lost mm -hmm. to the wind. Because we changed our YouTube channel. We have a new one, Generation X. We did. That's not the one where you called the guy yeah. the wrong name, was it? That was different. Okay. That was like one of my favorite. That's the first interview I've ever done, and I screwed up. I know. I don't, don't you don't have to get defensive. It was funny. It's a good story. It's been long enough that we can I laugh about this. So, Tyler, I know. whatever. It, was, well, it wasn't like it wasn't like Phil Spencer. It'd be bad if you called Phil Spencer <laughs> Tom or, or something. Don. You know, <laughs> right? Uh, I'm gonna so, ask anyway. you. I'm throw a curveball here before we wrap up because um, we we need to end okay. on a happy note because we went really, 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 really down. So, we let's say you dark, can only yeah. get one game from this list. So, Avengers, Ari, Tony Hawk, mm. or NBA. Which one are you getting and why? Avengers. And why? I think it's just a... It's, uh, I'm set on sports games, and like the NBA is probably my least favorite league of the major four. And plus, I just... like NBA 2K is a great game, but it's... 
it's the one I've played the least of, so it's the hardest for me to pick up and play, yeah, if that makes sense. That. Um, like, it's super good. You can tell it is. It's just, yeah, I don't play enough of it. Um, but this is all due to my Timberwolves really sucking forever. Like, it's hard to be in, invested in the NBA when your team wins, like, 14 games a year. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Mar- the Avengers, just a different type of game. Um, Pro Skater will be fun. I will play it. But I, I think if I had to pick one, it would be this one. Yeah, How I think you? I'm going to throw the, the curveball and go Ari. Um, I love the puzzle aspect okay. of it. It's like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's puzzly. You have the ability to change the seasons, which makes it like so. Yeah. With the demo, we'll change the well, yeah, environment too. I mean. Like when you change the season, it changes yeah. the environment because when you change like winter, you can make like ice blocks, um, and so that was yep. used in one of the puzzles. Uh, I think the game has changed based mm-hmm. on what we've seen. Like it, it just looks much better. But I'm I'm actually really yeah. excited for this one. Um, so I'm going to go with that because it also means I only have to pay $40 okay. instead of $80 to play it on the first. And I don't have to worry about battle passes. So, Well, uh, you don't you know, think. But I don't know. Modus Games has done so. a pretty good job <laughs> publishing these like, indie games. Yeah. Um, they're also publishing the, uh, oh my gosh, Chris Tales, uh, which we got to play the demo of if you played the demos during the mm-hmm. Xbox Fest last month. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited for that one too. So yeah, that would be the game I picked. Check it out. Was that the one that goes forward and yes. backward in time? Okay, that that game so, was really cool. A lot of good stuff this yeah. week. Um, like I said at the beginning of the show, the very beginning of the show. Um, this is where where all the games start coming out. So you're gonna have stuff to play if you've been bored. Mm-hmm. Um, game Pass Drake Hollow just came out. Check our review for that. Um, it's on Game Pass too. Very fun crafting game. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you yep. might be tired of that, but it's made by the makers of Flame in the Flood. So if you like that, you might like it. It's different, though. But Check out our Madden yes, review, too. It's our new longest review, um, word-wise. So there you go. Tyler yeah. Is very lengthy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm thorough. I thought I had a long one with Desperado Stone, um, uh, but you, you beat me. Um, yeah. I usually have a lot to say about this franchise. Yeah. I could have added on another six, 700 words, but nah. We'll, we'll let it be. Yeah, go subscribe on YouTube, please. So. Uh, brand new channel, Generation Xbox. We yeah. have the PJ 2 2K impressions from last week. Uh, we'd love, mm-hmm. love to have you check that out. Um, yeah, go to the site, join the forums. Love to have you do all that. Follow us on Twitter, Generation X underscore box. Um, great tweets being out. Uh, there was one about horror games. A lot of people love horror games. Not my cup of tea. But there's some horror games coming to Xbox. Yeah. Also, real quick before we get out of here, um, YouTube, make sure you subscribe there because we, so we had a lot of people that really liked when we did seeing the, the daily news apps Monday through Thursday. Um, we obviously don't do those anymore, but we are going to be doing something video based on YouTube uh, weekly, which is just kind of a quick recap of the Xbox news of the week. And we'd love to have you come support that and check that out. And the best way to make sure you never miss one is to go subscribe today, Generation Xbox on YouTube. So that's that. All right, I'll yes, let you get so us out of here. That's going to do it for episode 225. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, tune in next week for episode 226. In the meantime, play some great games. Enjoy your week. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.